These are the top 10 Python questions. And question number one, what is Python used for? Again, according to Medium, Python is a general purpose and high level programming language. You can use Python for developing desktop GUI applications, websites, and web applications. Also, Python is a high level programming language. It allows you to focus on core functionality of the application by, by taking care of the common programming task. So what does this all mean in non-nerd? Python is used for all kinds of different types of programming, AI, web, system automation, all kinds of stuff. Python has a huge amount of modules, basically pre-configured chunks of code or components of code that you can use for free in your projects, saving you a lot of time. They call these Python code components, they call them modules. You have modules for AI, you got modules for drawing, modules for game design, modules for math, modules for data science, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's one of the big reasons why Python is so popular. The second reason is that the Python code itself, the syntax, is actually pretty easy to write. And Python itself, as a language, just allows you to write a lot less code if you compare it versus, say, C++ or C. With Python, you can write, let's say, five lines of code to get something done, whereas in C, C++, it might take you 500 lines of code. Video is sponsored by Kite, which is a machine learning powered plugin that works with major code editors like Atom, VS Code, Sublime, Vim, and PyCharm. And basically, they use machine learning to superpower code completions. So I'm showing you Kite in action so you can see how it works. Kite uses ranked completions that are sorted by relevance rather than popularity or alphabetical order. Kite has line of code completion, so it completes a full line of code. They have something called Intelligent Snippets, which is an advanced function call experience using machine learning to suggest placeholder values. Finally, if you look on the uh, right-hand side, as the cursor moves, you see an example of something called Copilot, which uh, basically displays the docs relative to wherever your cursor happens to be. One of the big selling points for me about Kite is that it will reduce the number of lines of code that you write by as much as 50%. As you know, I don't take many sponsors, so this is a worthwhile product to get into, and it's free. Link is below. Question number two, is Python easy to learn? Python is a simple and easy to learn language because of its clear syntax readability. That's why it reduces the cost of programming maintenance. It is good for starting out because of its simple syntax. Syntax is just a nerd word for the code, the actual code that you write. Python syntax are shorter and than most programming languages like Java, C, C++, etc. So as I alluded to in question number one, one of the uh, advantages of Python is that the code is very expressive, meaning very little code you write in Python, it gets a lot done versus Java, versus C, C++. But Python is kind of equivalent in that regard uh, to uh, Ruby, to PHP, to JavaScript, and there are other languages that are just as expressive as Python, but and meaning it takes a lot less code to write to get something done versus say C or C++, but each language has its pros and cons. A lot of people find Python easy to learn because the code, the Python code itself, it reads a lot like English. It doesn't have funny symbols that you see in JavaScript or PHP or Ruby. And it's just, uh, it's more approachable. That being said, if you have good code courses in the other languages, Java, PH, JavaScript, PHP, Python, Ruby, they're all pretty equivalent in terms of difficulty. Uh, Swift, I put that in there, although Swift is a different beast. Is Python free to use? Short answer is yes. I'll just read the response here from python.org. Python is developed under an OSI approved open source license, making it freely usable and distributable even for commercial use. Python's license is administered by the Python Software Foundation. That's one of the big advantages of Python is in that because it's from the bones up free, 
open source, you, you can develop the next greatest application like Instagram and you won't have to worry about paying somebody a license. Next question, is Python better than C++? Well, let's see what they say here at uh, this site. Again, I'm getting this all from Google and then giving you my perspective as a 169 year old nerd. Python is slower than C++, a lot slower in terms of runtime. When you take a chunk of C++ code against most chunks of Python code, the C++ code is like pew, and the Python code is like an old man walking down the street. Actually, Python is like an old man in a, with a walker walking down an icy street. So a Python is really slow versus C++, but that is not these days terribly relevant. Let me just finish this. Python is slower than C++. Python helps in faster application development and keep introducing, and it keeps introducing additional language features. Writing code in C++ is not as easy as in Python due to its complex syntax. There's a lot of stuff in C++ you have to take care of, but you do not have to take care of when you're writing Python code, like memory management is one example. Python is easier to use and writing Python code because of its friendly syntax. When you say one language is better than the other, the fact of the matter is it really depends on what you are doing. Sometimes C++ will be better than Python. Sometimes Python will be better C++. In all cases, they will be better than Ruby. But nonetheless, uh, I'm just joking about Ruby. Little, little Ruby joke. Don't get caught up in the trap as my suggestion of this language is better than the other. It all depends on what you need to do. That being said, for most projects, you're probably much better off using Python. Not for all, but for most. How much does Python program cost? Python training program. Again, I'm just taking this off of Google here. A course title, Advanced Python Programming, two days, 1300 US dollars, 1350. Introduction to Python Programming, Four days, 2,700 US dollars per student. That's at this company here. Again, I'm just grabbing this off of Google. Uh, you don't need to go to the super expensive Python training. You can get my Python training course for, uh, I don't know, 30 bucks. And if you want Python certification, it's a little more expensive, but a lot of people find my Python course superb. So you might want to check that out before you enlist on a $2,700 course. Can I learn Python on my own? That's the next question. So this is from Quora. Definitely it's possible. If you're interested, just dive in. Python is one language well suited to the beginner and it is also widely used professionally. So a good choice. There are lots of tutorials and helpful Python and programming communities. You can use them. Definitely for sure. Python is a very good language to learn on your own. Again, I'm going to shamelessly self-promote my studio web SaaS software, which is used by schools all over the world. It's interactive. So you're learning with video, but you're getting interactive instant response. You need, you need help, instant response right away, much better than just videos. Next question, what companies use Python? Let's take a look at 10 famous websites built using Python. Instagram. Instagram, the world's biggest online photo sharing app, uses Python on its back end. Google. Google is the most widely used search engine in the world with over 75% of market share. Google. Spotify uses Python. Netflix uses Python. Uber uses Python. Dropbox, Pinterest, Instacart, and many, many others. So Python is highly regarded. Next question. Is Python written in C++? C and C++ are compiled languages while Python is an interpreted language. So what does that mean? Interpreted language means that the language uh, is read by the Python app that executes the Python commands and it processes the code as the code is running. Now, you have to understand, Python being an interpreted language means that there is a Python program or application that reads and processes your Python code when the code is run. That's interpreted language. It's all about JavaScript is interpreted, PHP is interpreted, Ruby is interpreted, they're run on the fly. You write your Python code. When somebody execute that Python code, let's say it's a Python website based website. When somebody hits the loads of web page that uses Python in the background, 
that Python is read and run at the same time. Whereas compiled languages like C, C++, Java, C Sharp, .NET, they are pre-processed and turned into a much smaller, faster format, if you will, compiled format. And so they're pre-processed before they're actually run. That's the difference between interpreted and compiled language. Interpreted languages are pre-processed. So um, there's advantages and disadvantages to each type of language. Typically, interpreted languages run slower than, than compiled languages, but interpreted languages are usually faster to, to write the code with because you can get instant response as you're building your application. So the question was, is Python written C++? It is. How does Python make money? You can make money with Python programming skills in the following ways. Get a developer job, create a startup, freelancing, teach coding online, create a YouTube channel, monetize it, create a blog and monetize it, join coding contests. The easiest is to start freelancing and get a job. Those are by far the easiest. Next thing I would suggest is create a startup, teach coding online. Yeah, a lot of people get into that, although uh, there's so many people out there um, and people are starting to realize that learning to code from noobs there's so many noobs out there who put out courses, is not a good thing. So I would say become a developer, get, a free, get into freelancing, or maybe start a startup. Is YouTube written in Python? YouTube is a big user of Python. The entire site uses Python for different purposes. View video, control templates for website, administrator video, access to conical data, and many more. Python is everywhere on YouTube. So there you go. Can I learn Python in a month? I can tell you what I read. Of course you can, not a problem. So we'll see what they say here uh, through the Google. If you have the workable knowledge of any of these languages, you can learn Python in a month. Even if you don't have any prior programming knowledge on any programming language, you still can learn Python in a month. Learn the basics of Python syntax takes a couple of days. Yeah, that's pretty much right. So what they were saying in the first sentence, um, again, I'm taking, taking uh, summaries derived from Google, which they derive from different sites. I just thought it was an interesting format. Uh, yeah, you can definitely learn Python within a, month, within a month from scratch. That's very doable. Many of my students have. Many, 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 many have. Actually, you can learn the basics of Python in a couple of weeks with Studio Web. Can I learn Python without knowing C? Well, before I read the Quora answer, of course, you don't need to know any other language to learn Python. Let's see. Can we learn Python without knowledge of C and Java? Yes, definitely you can learn Python, which will be very easier for you to learn to start as a career in the field of programming. All right, so not the best English, but I agree 100%. What is the point of coding? The practice of programming is one of teaching of a computer to do something. No, it's not teaching the computer. That's false. You're only teaching the computer if you're doing machine learning and AI where you're, you're teaching the algorithm. But general, normal programming, you're just sending instructions to the computer. That's me. Does Apple use Python? Let's see. Mac OS 10.0 comes with Python 2.7 pre-installed by Apple. So 10.8 comes with Python 2.7, which is not good because 2.7 is the old Python, you want to have the 3x version, whether it be 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, whatever. You want to be in the 3 branch. Of course, if you do Python 2, there's a lot of Python 2 stuff out there, to convert it to Python 3 is not a huge deal. It's a bit of a pain, but it's not a huge deal. But anyway, so yes, uh, Apple, at least, I'm sure they use Python in the back end, but Python does come with Mac OS X. Does Netflix use Python? Yeah, I don't need to read that. Of course they do. Can Python be used to hack? Yes, it can. Python was actually famously used by Google to do web scraping. That's not hacking, but it's scraping, basically going to the sites, reading the sites, and parsing the text. That's Parsing is just a nerd word for reading the text and filtering it. I'll end with this. Why is Python so popular? First statement here is more productive. First and foremost reason why Python is, is much more popular because it is a highly productive as compared to other programming languages like C++ and Java. Python is also very famous for its simple programming syntax, code readability, and English-like commands to make coding in Python a lot easier and efficient. This is true. 
Another reason why Python is so popular is because it has a huge collection of modules, which again, if you recall, modules are basically prepackaged code mini apps, if you will, in Python that you can leverage to do things like create games, draw, animate, uh, analyze data, or scrape web pages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just so you know, that Python is not the only language with a big set of modules. They all do, or a lot of them do, although Python is pretty exceptional in that regard. So uh, there you go. Python is not necessarily the best language out there in all situations. That is for sure, there's no such thing. But overall, it's one of the most flexible and arguably the most flexible language in the world today in terms of what you can do with it. All right, I hope you found this video useful.